This is Jamie Banks, President of Quiet Communities. I'm a scientist with background in health economics, health outcomes, environment, and policy. Quiet Communities is a national nonprofit dedicated to helping communities reduce health and environmental harm from noise and related pollution. Our Quiet American Skies program focuses on aviation. This presentation is a primer on the harms of aviation noise and emissions for decision makers and the public. We know aviation is extremely complex and that there are no easy solutions, but understanding the impacts can help inform solutions to restore balance, protecting those on the ground as well as in the air. In this presentation, eight topics will be discussed listed here, followed by a summary and conclusion. The aviation industry. Civilian aviation is growing. Established sectors are projected to double or triple in size in the next 20 to 30 years. More dramatic growth is projected for newly emergent sectors of urban air mobility vehicles and drones. Commercial jets are already harming communities. The Federal Aviation Administration's NextGen program concentrates flight paths over narrow areas, adversely impacting communities underneath and around. At the right, going clockwise from the upper left to lower left, you can see the growing concentration of flight paths that occurred in Montgomery County, Maryland from the first to fourth quarter of 2015 when NextGen was introduced. Flight density over affected neighborhoods increased 340 to 520%. General aviation noise and emissions are also causing harm in urban, suburban, and rural communities. Sources include small planes, commuter and tourism helicopters, flight school operations, skydiving, and military operations. Residents have no control over the impacts. Drones and urban air mobility vehicles around sensitive areas are going to exacerbate this problem. Here's what the nation's commercial jet traffic looks like. Imagine how it will look when these numbers double or even triple. Without policy changes, more Americans will be harmed and more ecosystems damaged. It's a public health problem, it's an environmental problem, it's a national problem. Community experience. For many communities, it's a daily barrage of hundreds of flights per day. Residents of greater Washington, D.C. experience more than 400 flights per day. These jets can fly at low altitudes, producing loud, incessant noise day and night with a pervasive smell of jet fuel. This is happening not only in urban and suburban areas, but also in rural areas from various aviation sources. Complaints may get little to no response. There appears to be no accountability at the source. Some people even report being harassed after they complain. In May 2022, a community pilot survey found that the five most common exposures to aviation were loud noise, noise penetrating into homes, low-flying aircraft, nighttime noise, and repetitive noise. The five most common impacts were sleep disruption, fatigue and exhaustion, elevated blood pressure, physical symptoms related to emotional responses, and shakiness, jitteriness, and agitation. The FAA refers to aviation noise as an annoyance. This contrasts sharply with descriptors from community members shown here. One person feared losing her job because she was so sleep deprived. Another saved for 30 years to buy his own home, but now cannot even sleep in his own bed. Another described his home as a living hell. As I will explain shortly, these reactions have serious health consequences. Aviation Noise and Health Over 50 years ago, U.S. Surgeon General William Stewart stated, Aside from hearing loss, it has been demonstrated that noise from aircraft and other sources causes physiological changes, including cardiovascular, glandular, and respiratory effects reflective of a generalized stress reaction. Nowhere in that statement is the word annoyance used. The scientific evidence on the health impacts of noise has grown dramatically, especially in recent years. Since 1990, nearly 2,200 articles have been published on noise and health generally, and more than 500 on aviation noise and health. 
we do not need more research to understand that aviation noise has serious health impacts. Noise is much more than an annoyance, as indicated by these statements from the American Public Health Association's recent policy statement, Noise as a Public Health Hazard. Chronic noise, even at low levels, can cause annoyance, sleep disruption, and stress that contribute to cardiovascular disease, cerebrovascular disease, metabolic disturbances, exacerbation of psychological disorders, and premature mortality. Noise interferes with cognition and learning, contributes to behavior problems, and reduces achievement and productivity. Noise isn't just about loudness. If it was, a dripping faucet would never bother anyone. It's important to consider how long the noise lasts, pattern, tonality, repetition, and sound frequency. Is it high like a squeal or low like a boombox? Does it come through walls and windows? Can you get away from it? All of these factor into the impacts. Sleep disruption, annoyance, and stress are among the first line responses to noise that serve as proxies for increased health risks. Whether you're awake or asleep, those responses set off a physiological cascade, elevating stress hormones, which raise blood pressure, heart rate, blood glucose, and so forth, which in turn raise risks of heart attack, ischemic heart disease, stroke, metabolic disturbances, and mortality. Today, this cascade is understood at the cellular and molecular levels. Nighttime aircraft noise is especially hazardous. In this large study of 25,000 cardiovascular deaths near Zurich Airport, high noise levels from nighttime aircraft increased by 44% the risk of dying from cardiovascular causes compared with quiet conditions. Note the threshold of 50 decibels. The FAA's 65 DNL threshold to define residential compatibility is two to four times louder. As noted earlier with the dripping faucet, repeated noise can cause stress and thus harm. As stated by cardiologist Thomas Munsell, repeated noise events prime the vasculature for developing endothelial damage. There is no tolerance development. That means that repeated noise sensitizes the lining of the blood vessels to damage, which in turn contributes to heart, metabolic, and other diseases. The FAA's thresholds for significant impact and residential compatibility do not account for repeated noise. This recent study of residents near LaGuardia Airport in New York found that increased exposure to aircraft noise was associated with increases in diagnoses of cardiovascular disease, substance use and mental health emergencies, and insomnia. Related to this is an earlier study of more than 6 million Medicare recipients showing that aircraft noise increases the risk of cardiovascular hospitalizations. With harm from noise come enormous economic costs. It's been known for decades that aircraft noise impairs children's learning, starting with the pioneering work of Dr. Arlene Bronzapt in the 1980s. National studies, including this one by the National Academies, show that students in schools near airports exposed to noise 55 decibels and higher have lower math and reading scores, and that students at schools with sound insulation have better test scores. The noise threshold used, 55 decibels, is half as loud as the FAA's threshold for significant impact and residential compatibility. To end this section, I refer again to U.S. Surgeon General William Stewart, who said in 1978, calling noise a nuisance is like calling smog an inconvenience. Noise must be considered a hazard to the health of people everywhere. Aviation emissions and health. Various emissions are produced by aircraft. Many are harmful to health and environment. Aviation exhaust is emitted mainly as ultra-fine particles. It pollutes outdoor and indoor air. These small particles can penetrate deep into the lungs and be absorbed into the bloodstream, harming the lungs, heart, endocrine, neurologic, and reproductive systems. Yet this pollution is not routinely monitored or regulated. 
This study of more than 174,000 pregnant women living within 9 to 10 miles of Los Angeles International Airport found that ultrafine particle emissions increased the risk of preterm birth by 32%. This study found that residents living around Los Angeles International Airport have a 12% higher risk of malignant brain cancer with each interquartile increase in concentration of aviation ultrafine particle emissions. In African Americans, this increase was 32%. In Europe, studies for the Dutch government found that short-term exposure to aviation ultrafine particle emissions significantly increased daily respiratory symptoms and bronchodilator use in children and caused a decline in lung function and heart function in adults. Another problem is the use of leaded gasoline in small piston engine aircraft. We know that no level of lead is safe. It damages the brains of children and leads to reproductive problems, cardiovascular disease, and neurodegenerative diseases in adults. 16 million Americans, including 3 million children, live within one kilometer of these small airports and are at especially high risk. Leaded fuel needs to be phased out as soon as possible. Aviation and Ecosystems A large and growing literature on man-made noise shows that it disrupts the ability of animals to communicate, find reproductive partners, evade predators, and find prey. It causes stress, diminishing their health and vitality. Noise and other stressors contribute to the loss of biodiversity that is so important to the health of our planet. Noise also affects forests, agriculture, and marine ecosystems by disrupting pollination and seed distribution, inhibiting ecosystem diversity, and damaging cells, proteins, DNA, and plant growth. We would be remiss if we did not also mention the impact of aviation on greenhouse gas emissions. Aviation is one of the fastest growing sources of carbon dioxide emissions. U.S. aviation is the largest contributor, accounting for 24% globally. Without effective policies, global aircraft emissions are projected to triple by 2050. Economics. What is all of this costing us? The external costs incurred by aviation noise and emissions are staggering. They encompass health care, educational remediation, climate-related damage, biodiversity losses, and property value losses. The public, not industry, bears the burden of the impacts and the costs. The health impacts of next-gen operations alone cost billions of dollars. A study of Baltimore Washington International Airport estimates those costs at $40 million per year. Applying just half that amount to the nation's 150 international airports brings the national total to $3 billion per year, accumulating to $90 billion over 30 years. Adding other impacts and aviation sectors is expected to increase those costs by orders of magnitude. Aviation Policy The Federal Aviation Administration has complete authority over civil aviation. It focuses on safety in the air and is not accountable for harms to public health and environment. Who then is responsible for protecting those on the ground? Communities have no control over impacts. The Airport Noise and Capacity Act of 1990 stripped localities of control over commercial jet aircraft noise, including operations and nighttime curfews. In exchange, U.S. airlines upgraded to quieter engines, but those gains have been offset by volume increases, flight pattern changes, and so on. The FAA prevents airport sponsors from regulating noise by threatening to pull Airport Improvement Program Grants Right now, no one is protecting the American people. Congress airports and airlines point to others for responsibility. Impacted communities are powerless to effect change. Millions on the ground are unprotected. Aviation policy is not protecting health and environment. 
aviation noise policy has not kept up with scientific knowledge on adverse effects or with dramatic industry growth. The foundation of policy is acoustic engineering, not human and environmental health. And this problem is exacerbated by the absence of an active federal noise control program. The FAA's metrics, the historic linchpins of aviation noise policy, are fatally flawed. Thresholds for significant impact and residential compatibility haven't changed in 60 years. They're at odds with national and international thresholds to protect health that are two to more than four times quieter. They're at odds with science showing those thresholds harm health, sleep, and learning. Results of the FAA's own Neighborhood Environmental Survey confirm the inadequacy of those thresholds. It is widely agreed that these methods and metrics need replacement. Here's an excerpt from a letter sent by members of Congress to the previous FAA administrator saying, fundamentally, the method the FAA uses to measure aircraft noise is deeply flawed. If these metrics are not reliable, that calls into question the FAA's entire framework of regulations and programs to reduce aircraft noise. Anticipating strong future growth it's critical that U.S. aviation policy focus on protecting health and environment. The EPA and Department of Health and Human Services must be involved as they once were. To summarize, noise and emissions from aviation sources are damaging public health and the environment. Aviation growth means these problems are on course to worsen substantially. These are national problems with enormous public costs. Current policy fails to address these problems. At present, no one is accountable for the harms to the public or to the environment. Health and environmental agencies need to be involved in aviation policy. Decisive federal action is required. This quote from former EPA Administrator Russell Train is as appropriate today as it was back in 1976. It is time for all of us to come together and to come to grips with the problem of aviation noise. We really know what needs to be done. We have simply lacked the will to do it. Let's get on with the job. This is a national problem. Balance must be restored to protect people on the ground as well as those in the air. Federal action is needed now. Special acknowledgement for this presentation goes to research leaders and their colleagues for their groundbreaking work and to members of our Quiet American Skies program. Thank you.